The uh, Stan National Conference brought together students from as far away as California and for us as far away as Cape Cod. Uh, we traveled together in an eight hour plus bus ride riding, arriving at 6.30 in the morning on Friday. We had the most packed three days one could possibly imagine in Washington, D.C. There's not a student that was on that bus that didn't feel that their life was changed in some way because they now see that it's important to make a lifelong commitment to standing up against genocide. I went to the Stan Student National Conference in D.C. because I was interested in learning more about what's going on in Darfur and the Congo and Burma and learning about ways to tell other people and how to advocate that to other people, including the government and my peers. And my favorite part of the conference was the Connecting the Dots workshop run, run by Mark Hannes, and it was about the Congo, the Burma, and Darfur, and how they're all related. And what we found out was shocking. It was that Burma, the issue is actually, it's, di it's quite different from Darfur, but it's also pretty bad, because 100% of the attacks are from the government. And in Darfur, there's more variation in who the attacks are done by. Oh. So another big part of the conference was the Tents of Hope, which is one of the main reasons we got there. Now, uh, last year we purchased, we raised $500 to purchase a Tent of Hope. And at one of our major Darfur events last year, we painted the Tents of Hope with all different symbols of hope and refuge and just a very, you know, positive images. And it was just amazing to just walk up and down the aisles and just see all of these tents and just displayed in Washington, D.C., where I think there was over 700 people participating. On the first day in Washington, D.C., we all visited the Holocaust Museum. And the way the Holocaust Museum is set up, it's four floors, and basically you go through the stages that the people in Europe went through. It starts off in Kristallnacht, and it goes through like them being thrown out of their houses and being brought to the ghetto, and eventually you get to the extermination. And a few of the points you'll always remember is um, they actually have a railway cart that they had that they were brought to the extermination camps and you walk through it. And you walk through an event feeling and you're just like, you feel like your insides are clenching together. It's a very small space and you can't even imagine it with like 20 or 30 more people in there. And you're just walking through and um, they have like all their um, personal items. They took away like toothbrushes, you know, shoes, stuff that you kind of really don't think that much about. Little doors from the extermination gassing like just all this stuff and it's, it's very overwhelming, a lot of emotion. And then uh, I remember when like, you turn a corner, you're hit with this musky, familiar smell that it's like something you're used to and it's all the shoes. The shoes of the people who had died and you're just like, you're in this empty room just with them and like it's just overpowering. And you keep walking through and eventually one thing you get to is, um, it's like this bridge walkway and there are just photographs everywhere but they're not like sad photographs, they're like they look like regular people. You got like family ski trips, you know, brothers and sisters together. And then you read the little plaque. Um, there are photographs of a town that was completely eliminated. So you just keep going through that. It's a lot of emotion. And eventually you get to the end. And just like after going through that, it kind of gives um, you more purpose as to why we were at this conference, why we were in DC. Because we were trying to prevent something like that from ever happening again.